PSG's ultimate goal is to win the Champions League. Every season they start out as favourites, but by the time the knockout rounds come by, they end up disappointing everyone. Imagine having the world's best front three in Mbappe, Messi and Neymar, and end up looking so average. It's simply unacceptable. But today, that changes. I'm going to become the manager of PSG, and it's my job to handle these egos, manage these superstars, get them working towards the collective goal of PSG's first ever Champions League. It's now time for day one as PSG boss. Our first task at the club was to figure out the team we had and see what improvements could be made. And boy, did we have the money to make improvements. 240 million to spend. But in all honesty, the team we had was incredibly talented. Yo, we've got Mbappe, Messi and Neymar up top. What more do you want from a front three? Then the likes of Verratti, Marquinhos, Hakimi. There is no lack of talent in this squad. That is for sure. But what I realized is this super talented team, there were egos, there are superstars managing them is going to be the real challenge and we're going to have to be very strict. Building a system to get the best out of Mbappe, Messi and Neymar was priority and so I looked through different formations to figure out what could work best but ultimately a 4-1-2-1-2 diamond formation seemed like the best one. With the way I want to set the team up the plan is to have Messi and Mbappe having a lot of freedom up top. Neymar not so much his job will be linking up the midfield to the attack. Hopefully he's fine with it. We're going to have to have a chat with our front three and discuss this because I'm sure Neymar's going to be pissed about being more of a, you know, donkey role, doing a bit of the dirty work as well. Regardless of our attack, if we don't have a competent midfield, they're not going to be able to do anything. So my first task here is to sign a solid midfielder or two. And we do have the money to do exactly that. And so we begin negotiations with Klopp for a certain midfielder. And the negotiations actually went down pretty smoothly. And the player in question was Fabinho. And yes, we'd managed to convince Fabinho to accept our proposal to accept the project we're building. Fabinho believes in us. It's time for him to move from Liverpool to PSG. This actually was a solid deal because I just traded Fabian Ruiz and 30 million for him. Absolutely no denying it. Fabinho gives the defense a lot of security, but I still feel like we need another midfielder. But before that, time to negotiate with Graham Potter because there's a certain attacker I want to sign. And so for 40 million, I've completed the signing of Hakim Ziyech to PSG. Pretty sure in real life, this deal was going to go through on deadline day, but for some reason it didn't. We're making it happen now because CH is, I think, going to be crucial in case something happens to our front three. Everything we've done so far, very sensible. Signing Fabinho, bringing in CH. I think we've really improved crucial areas of the team, but there is still a statement I feel we need to make being the manager of PSG because that's what PSG do. It's time to splash the cash. 150 million in the bank. There's no way we're not doing something crazy. And yes, we've started negotiations behind Barcelona back with their golden boy none other than Pedri. This would be a statement signing if we can lure him in from Barcelona oh my days and we've just told exactly that. The golden boy has now arrived and yes we've completed the signing of Pedri. It costed me about 80 million plus Carlos Soler. We've bamboozled Barcelona and taken home their golden boy. Bit of deja vu as that's exactly what PSG did when they brought in Neymar. With Pedri in the team I think we've strengthened the midfield enough to do the job so that the attack can do their thing. It was now time to race towards our first game of the season and it's the French Super Cup. A solid chance to win not just the trophy but also to see if the ideas we're building are working or not. But before the game I had some ground rules to set which at a club like PSG we need to do. Firstly who takes free kicks? It's going to be clear. Neymar is going to take any free kicks from the left side while Messi is going to take all the other free kicks because we know he's the best free kick taker in the world. Penalties is where I'm confused like Neymar is better statistically but Mbappe is just inevitable. Who do I give the penalty duty? I feel like since Mbappe is Paris born and bred it's it's got to be him and he does take penalties really well. We saw that in the World Cup final but the bigger decision I've got here to make and that could really imbalance the squad is the captaincy. I feel like in this team Marquinhos is not really that good of a leader and I feel like it's Mbappe's time to get the armband take the extra responsibility and I feel with that, the dynamics with Messi and Neymar will also be better because Mbappe will be more responsible. So there you go. It's big decisions. Also, before we begin our season, I wanted to have a chat with our front three just to clear things out of the way. First up, killing Mbappe. I told him I'm making him the new captain and that I expect to see some leadership from him. And no, no bickering, no nonsense, none of the ego stuff. We need the team on the same page. And good thing was Mbappe was sensible enough, agreed he's happy with the captaincy. And I think things should be fine with him 
Messi and Neymar. Then it was time to send a message to Messi and that was pretty simple. I told him he's the GOAT and I'm setting up the team in such a way to give him the freedom to perform. With Messi, you know he's humble. He, he knows what he needs to do to help the team. But with Neymar, this is where things get tricky. He's got so much talent and just does some stupid stuff like missing knockout Champions League games for his sister's birthday and everything. Like, I don't even get that. But I just told Neymar that in this team, he's gonna have to track back. He's gonna have to defend and help out the team because Messi and Mbappe are getting the freedom and that's the way I want to play this team. If you have a problem with that, well, we can organize a transfer. Can't fly. Neymar was a bit pissed, but I think he understands. Well, I hope so. The Super Cup is a great chance to see if everything we're working towards is working or not. I'm desperate as the manager of PSG to start off my tenure with a win. I won't lie, I had high expectations for the team we built and honestly, they deliver. Mbappe, he's opened up. Of course it's him. It's always him. Killing Mbappe scores the very first goal for us. Let's go. Oh, Pedri's a driving force right now. Look at him go. Keeping the ball nicely. Hakimi. Now Messi. Killing Mbappe. Oh, it's brilliant football. The midfield and the attack are linking up so well. So my era as PSG manager begins with, of course, a trophy. Mbappe and Messi together lifting the trophy. We're cooking something special here. With the first trophy under our belt, it was now time to kick off the French League season. Instantly this season, I could feel the difference in our midfield. Fabinho was rock solid. And that built the foundation for us to score more goals. Messi, lovely ball for Nuno Mendes. Looking for killing Mbappe. That is so well worked. Messi sliding it through for killing Mbappe. I love that duo so freaking much. With that, looks like we've got things covered so far in Liga. A brilliant start to the season. But the Champions League is what matters for PSG and our journey begins now. New signing Pedri was exactly what we needed to control these big games. And when you control games, the goals come along. Hakimi has broken through looking for Leo Messi. Messi scoring headers. Yo! Marco Verratti, it's Pedri in the box. And oh, ho, ho, look at Pedri. Pedri scoring goals like that. Yes, we managed to get the job done. Topping our Champions League group. That's going to give us a relatively easier draw, which is, I think, what all clubs want. But on the flip side in Liga, things could have been a bit better. We were a bit inconsistent and we're second in the league, which is not good. But we're now heading into January where we do have opportunities to, you know, just think of it stuff and make the team better. The first big decision I'm making in January is it's time to promote Kim Pembe to being a starter. Sergio Ramos I think it's going to be his last season. We then decide to make a very smart signing, and that's Hugo Ekitike on a permanent deal. We need a bit of depth in case Mbappe, Messi, Neymar, whoever gets injured. So that deal's done. What's left in the January window now is to renew Leo Messi's contract because his contract is expiring, and letting him go for free would be just embarrassing. But in all honesty, we couldn't really agree to terms with Messi. I don't know what his plans are, but he might not be at PSG come end of season unless we can continue convince him. If this is his last season here, I would love to win the Champions League. Since I thought the team was still very good, I decided to not really make any signings in the window and just move on with the season. It was now time for the Champions League knockouts. We had drawn Spurs and I took this game maybe a bit too lightly as we lost 2-1. This is catastrophic. This is what keeps happening with PSG every season and it's happened with us. We're playing at the Parc des Princes. The PSG Ultras will be there. We need to knock Spurs out. I I can't believe this, guys. I really can't believe this. Neymar is injured. This is very sus because it's once again with the Champions League round of 16 looming. He's definitely gone back to Brazil for his sister's birthday. You just can't stop this man from partying, man, honestly. And look at that. It's a sprained ankle. He'll conveniently be back in like a couple of weeks. Neymar, I can't believe this. But that's why we've signed Hakim Ziyech. With Neymar out, someone in this team needed to take responsibility. And that's why we made Mbappe the captain. Kylian Mbappe is broken through. Of course, Mbappe gets us back into this game. No Neymar, no problem. Kylian Mbappe has to score. Of course he does. He's inevitable. Spurs are getting knocked out because this man is something else. We were now in the Champions League quarterfinals, but this is where we face our most difficult test, and that's Real Madrid. Thankfully, Neymar is done with the shenanigans, and he's back. To beat Real Madrid in the Champions League, we're going to need something special. We're going to need to be perfect. And that man killing Mbappe, it's a chance to prove the world that he made the right choice staying at PSG. And my worst nightmare came through. Real Madrid were unstoppable. No, they're just too good. 
They're just too good. Real Madrid, Karim Benzema, they give you no room to breathe. Luka Modric, how's he just walking like that? No, I took him out, but he still scores. Luka Modric at the age of 37. I can't believe this. They end up beating us 4-1 in the first leg. I cannot believe this. And just like that, everything we worked towards, completely gone. We were in such good form. The team was doing well. Favorites for the Champions League, but Real Madrid just thumped us. The only way we can even slightly save our season and it's by getting the job done in Liga. We're two points off the top. We need to win the league. Looks like Messi and all are pulling together because we've got a league title to win. Come on. Looks like Neymar's finally woken up from his slumber and he's playing some serious football now. Gonna square it for Leo Messi. Simple goal. And so the late season resurgence is enough for us to win the French League title. But is it enough for our ambitions for PSG? I don't think so. Also, guys, we're trying to hit 1 million subscribers. If you guys can subscribe to the channel, help me out. That'll be awesome. We're now into our second season as PSG manager. The goal has to be to win the Champions League. And I think if we don't manage to do it, we're gonna get sacked. But to start things off, we've got terrible news. Leo Messi has decided to leave PSG and he's back at Barcelona at his boyhood club. Honestly, we can't blame Leo Messi for doing this. But it's our job now this season to figure out the team without Leo Messi and bring in a suitable replacement. Without Messi, this team is definitely different. And it's not just Messi who's gone. Sergio Ramos has retired as well. We're gonna have to really make some big changes to this team. And the first topic of discussion is the Messi replacement. Now we can go into the market, bring in another superstar, but I don't think that's the right thing to do. We've got Mbappe and Neymar on this team. Two superstars already. I want to sign a player who's going to get the best out of killing Mbappe and Neymar. And so I decide to sign Colo Muani for PSG. A humble, hardworking player. A great connection with killing Mbappe. This is not a superstar signing, but I think it's a signing that PSG needs. Don't get me wrong, Colo Muani is no Leo Messi. But if you look at what he offers to this team, he could get the best out of of Killian and Neymar. With that signing out of the way, we're now looking for a centre-back and our budget is pretty good to make this happen. Milan Skriniar is the chosen one for the PSG backline. I feel like he'll be perfect. The problem is, Man United are negotiating for him. We've got to be quick. And so we began negotiations with Inter and after a bit of back and forth, we convinced them to sell him to us for 85 million. It now completely depends on Milan Skriniar if he wants to join PSG or Man United. And yes, guys, Skriniar does end up choosing PSG. A massive signing for us to improve our defense. This is huge. With that, I believe our team was ready for the season ahead. The first game of the season, which was the French Super Cup, was slowly approaching. And I believe it was really important to have a chat with Neymar before the start of the season. We don't want him going off for his sister's birthday again this season. We need him focused. So I told Neymar, Messi's gone. You need to now step up and be a leader for Paris. And I specifically told him, no more partying and none of that nonsense. He's going to be here throughout the season, every game for PSG. Neymar reluctantly agreed. But yeah, you just never know if he fakes an injury or something. Hopefully it comes from within and he can deliver for us. We do start off our season in the best possible way. Go on, Killian. Killian. Oh, brilliant finish. Killian Mbappe doing the job. French Super Cup winners back to back. Hopefully this is a sign of special things to come. It was now time to kickstart the French League season. The signing of Colo Muani unlocked our attack. His movement really helped free up spaces. And because of him, we were scoring goals for fun in Liga. And just like that, we had found the perfect balance for Liga at least. But ultimately, it's the Champions League that matters. Our group had been revealed in Inter and Porto were in it, so it was a bit of a tricky group. Our problem in the Champions League was a leaky defense, but this season the signing of Skriniar made us solid at the back and that led to goals. Go on, Colo Muani. He's so quick. He is so quick and he's got the finish as well. Mendes looking for Mbappe. Oh, that's superb. That is superb from PSG. And so we've cleared our first hurdle in the Champions League, that is stopping the group stage and we did it without losing a single game. We then had the January transfer window but I was so happy with my team that I decided, you know what, let's just straight away get into the knockouts. The real hustle begins now as it's the Champions League round of 16 and we've got Liverpool to play. Playing at Anfield against Liverpool is going to be a real test and that's why I'm glad we banned Neymar from going to Brazil during this crucial period and boy did it pay off. Oh Neymar looking for that pass for Pedri, it was a superb pass and what a goal, come on. Neymar sees killing Mbappe, let's go, this should be a goal for us Mbappe. 
bringing it inside. There you go. Liverpool sinking at Anfield. Neymar and Mbappe, they're brilliant. With Neymar in fine form, we absolutely knocked out Liverpool. Our next hurdle in the Champions League was Roma. And in all honesty, killing Mbappe made light work of them. Mbappe off the crossbar, brilliant. Up next for us in the Champions League is Real Madrid. It just had to be them. These guys knocked us out of the Champions League last season. They caused us immense pain. Messi left this club without a Champions League because of these guys. We're in the semi-finals against Madrid and there's no way we're going home. This was Gillian Mbappe's chance to prove that he's the best in the world. Oh, Mbappe. Mbappe's broken through. He's beating the keeper. Oh, ho, ho, Gillian Mbappe. He is something special and he's in the mood. But Real Madrid are known as the kings of the Champions League for a reason. They scored a couple of quick fire goals. There was no way Mbappe was going to allow Real Madrid to knock us out. Hakimi. Mbappe. Mbappe. He's done it again. Kylian Mbappe saves the day. Paolo Muani. Neymar. Still Neymar. Looks for Mbappe. At the end, Mbappe has done it for PSG. Madrid aren't coming back from this. Beating Madrid at the Bernabeu gave us the momentum to get the job done. And we were now in a Champions League final. The team that we built over these two seasons, we finally solved the issues at PSG. We've got Neymar playing for the team. We've given Mbappe to the keys, but he's got the responsibility now to lead the team. The rest of the team is also balanced. We've built a squad to win PSG's first Champions League. Is this the moment we do it? It all comes down to this, whether we can deliver on the pitch or not. PSG have made a Champions League final before they lost to Bayern. This time, things have to be different. The final was absolutely intense and both teams had chances to score, but neither team could. It was super cagey. Time kept ticking on and nothing could separate these two teams. And with that, this game's going to pens. The last time Mbappe was in a penalty shootout, we know what happened. But this time needs to be different. Can Mbappe score his penalty and put his team into the lead? Of course he can. It's killing Mbappe. It's now Pogba to take his penalty, and that's a rocket as well. Up next, Fabinho is really good with penalties, and he makes his count too. Adrian Rapio against PSG's former club, and he puts his team level. Next up, Neymar. He's got a very unique style of penalties. But is that going to count as Neymar takes his penalty? Can Neymar put this one in? No, he misses. Neymar, no. Neymar misses his penalty and Juventus score. Colo Muani can't afford to miss. Colo Muani does not miss. But Juventus need to miss a penalty. Rodrigo de Paul is Argentinian. He is not going to miss. He scores his as well. It's all on Hakimi to keep things alive. Can Hakimi do that? Yes, he can. Now it's Chiesa to take this penalty. He's going for power. Donnarumma saves it. PSG are alive. It's all on Marco Verratti now. All this pressure. Can Verratti score? He does. Oh my god, this is crazy. Jude Bellingham, the captain of the event, is taken. He's missed. It's done. PSG have won their first Champions League. And Bobby gets his revenge. And Bobby is a Champions League winner. Oh my god. God. Yes, guys, we've managed to fix PSG over these two seasons. What a story it was. Great to see Mbappe get revenge in this penalty shootout. If you enjoyed me fix PSG, I'm sure you'll enjoy me fix Sunderland. Click here to watch that.